To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright I own this office building with 47 offices in it And when I ran it The first day I bought it There was a no solicitation sign on the front window I took it right down I told the receptionist, I said Anybody can solicit here. Anybody comes in, let me know who they are. And in a minute, I, I say, shoot, the guy's selling. What is he selling? I don't even care what he was selling. Bring him on in. And he'd sit down, and as soon as he sat down, I said, how you doing? My name's Phil. Here's the deal. You got 10 minutes to tell me what it is that you do. And then I'm going to get 10 minutes to tell you what it is I do. Okay? I met so many people that way. I made so many friends. His 10 minutes was up. I said, good, stand up. Come on, I'm going to go for a walk around my office building. You don't, well, I don't need any office space. Well, maybe you know somebody who does. Come on, let's go for a walk. Here's my conference rooms. Here's my big offices. Here's my little ones. If you're excited about what you do, if you're addicted to what it is that you do, people will pick up on that, and they, they enjoy that, and they want to be, they want to hear more of it. They want to be around you. And that's a lot. When you ask, how do we get deals? How do we get anything? Everything and anything that we've we got, or we've had, or we found, or we made, it all pretty much comes back to that kind of attitude. You know, making it happen, just making it happen. Sometimes out of necessity, we're, we're no different than a lot of people. Maybe we, uh, we go through like the little down periods where you know, all of a sudden the bills start piling up, and we're like, man, we better, we better make something happen, you know? And, uh, or when my office building loses a few clients, all of a sudden I, uh, I start making things happen again. So your, your attitude in this business, and probably in any business in the world, is, is critical. Yeah, it's constantly selling. I mean, even though, like, I'll go knocking on doors, I'll tell people, I'll, you know, I used to get hassled by the homeowners association. They say, there's no soliciting. I said, I'm not selling anything. I'm actually looking to buy something. <laughs> I'm just going door to door, offering people money. <laughs> um, yeah. That actually you called it. I said, I got the one lady got so mad at me because I said, uh, she goes, well, it's against our bylaws. I said, well, I don't own a house in here yet, so I'm not subject to your bylaws. <laughs> I'm not even privy to your bylaws. But as soon as I buy one in here, I will adhere to that. Um, we just got fined recently with an association that gave us a thousand dollar fine because we wouldn't join them to the lease. The association wanted to be, they wanted the power to evict our tenants on our behalf. <laughs> no, you can't. thousand dollars. Yeah. All right, does anybody have any questions? I'm, my specialty is pretty much acquisition and finance. So I, I like to do all the creative acquisition stuff and I do all the, all the uh, creative finance. And Bill does the management. He, he's, he's got more construction experience than I do as far as managing the contractors, managing the tenants. What's the question? Subject to is when you buy a house subject to an existing condition. The existing condition that we like to buy, we like to leave the place as a mortgage. We buy a house subject to a mortgage being in place. In other words, um, it's, a, it's a mortgage takeover, for lack of a better term. So it's taken over somebody else's mortgage. We don't formally assume them. We just tell them, give me your payment book. I'll take it over from here, you know, as long as you're comfortable with it. And most people aren't comfortable with it. Why would they be comfortable with it? Most, I'm saying most people are not. Yeah, most people okay. are not comfortable. They are. No, most people are not comfortable with it. Give her a scenario where somebody so, will be. How do you structure that so that you're comfortable with that? It's, it's Sometimes the people, we'll give them a scenario for yeah, it. It's kind of like a plan B, and I usually tell that to people. I tell that right away to people. I said, look, the only way I can buy your house is plan B. And maybe you're already at plan B. <laughs> but plan A would be to sell the house to somebody who's going to fall in love with it, move in, move their family in, raise their kids here. Plan B is if you can't find something to sell it, here's a way I can buy it. I'll buy it. Tell me how much do you owe for the property? How much equity do you have? I'll give you cash for your equity, not 100% of your equity, but I'll give you cash for some of your equity, and I'll take over your payments from here on out. Now, it's not the best way, 
but it's a plan B. And understand, you're going to be deeding me your house, and I'm going to be making the payments from here on out. But you, your name is still on the mortgage, and your name will be on the mortgage until that thing is paid off. So I know it's not the best thing, but it's something. And um, it's something. And some people like imagine a scenario where um, one of the, one of the scenarios, like the first scenarios that ever had happened back was when I bought my first few houses was where a guy was. Um, moved into another house, and his house that he moved out of, he couldn't make the payments on both houses anymore. So the, the house that he used to live in was going into foreclosure. And at that point, he was behind on payments, and he couldn't he couldn't keep his head above water. So his scenario, it, it was kind of a, the expression I heard before is least worst case scenario. It's the least worst thing, right? Least worst option. Least worst option, yeah. He could have, he could have go to foreclosure, or I said, look, how about I come in, I'll make up all the back payments, I'll bring your loan current, and I'll make the payments each and every month, and I'll fix the place up, I'll put my own money into it, fix it up, and then after it's all renovated, I'll refinance it or I'll sell it or whatever, at that point, the mortgage will be totally discharged, and then you're free to go. And um, he actually called me up and thanked me. He goes, man, you know, not only did you bring my mortgage current and you paid my mortgage every month, my credit is great now because you were making all the mortgage payments when I wasn't. <laughs> so, um, so it was like a, a credit repair program too. And yeah, that's what's subject to it. Did you put a lot of writing with him? Yeah, and, and the writing is a lot of writing because there's a lot of disclosures that have to go along with that. Um, you really have to cover your butt. Um, people. People do like kitchen table closings. I always tell them not to do that. Go to a, go to a legitimate title company, do a closing. Um, because, you know, if somebody's in, in, a, in a situation where they're in plan B mode and you help them with plan B, all of a sudden they're back to plan A mode. After, after everything, the dust has settled, they're all fine and dandy. They come back and say, wait a second, I, I didn't know what I was signing. So you, so you have to really make sure that you cover your butt and get everything documented. Up. Yeah, we need to redeem the property. Yeah. What's your consideration price here? Um, do you go up the assessed value? Well, whenever I buy a property, my cons my consideration is ninety percent of the time, probably ninety five percent of the time, my consideration is ten dollars another value consideration. Because ten dollars another value consideration is perfectly acceptable in, in most scenarios. Now you have to pay transfer tax uh, based on another number, and that's. And that's, um, they use the formula. Uh, as soon as you sign a $10 deed, they want to have it, Pennsylvania anyway, has a statement of value formula that says, um, we're gonna charge transfer tax based on the actual purchase price, or we're gonna base it on the assessed value times of some common level factor. And each county has its own, what they call common level ratio. So they multiply the assessed value times the common level ratio, the CLR, and, they, and then that's the, the price. So then they, you pay transfer tax on whatever that amount is. But I, I, for privacy purposes, like to always have a $10 deed, because I don't think it's anybody's business what I paid for that. So, and I also put on the deeds, do not publish. I don't want, you know, I don't want them to publish in the newspaper and stuff like that when a transaction happens. Do you ever find in that scenario, has there ever been any blowback from any lender that found out that there was a transfer title without their knowledge? Uh, no, no, I haven't had any issues, and I, I've sometimes I've actually put my head down the lion's mouth, and I'll, you know sometimes I've actually gone to them and said, look, uh, I'm buying the house. And like when I was really scared to do it in the beginning, because I thought like, oh my gosh, they're gonna they're gonna like call the loan due. I used to think that. Um, now, most of them probably would want to do. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care if Aunt Sally's paying Johnny's mortgage. They just as long as they're getting the payments now. I've, called, I've, I've told them before, you know, when I, I used to call up and you say, look, um, this guy's going to sell me the house and he's behind on the payments. Now, I'm willing to make them up, but I'm not going to assume this loan. So I'm going to make up the back payments for him. I'm the financial, his financial friend in this situation. I'll make up his back payments and I'll make the payments from here on out. But understand, this thing's, you know, not getting paid off. <laughs> and so, 
the lender's like, uh, okay, you know, they don't. Now, when you when you're talking to Chase, you know, <laughs> person that's answering that phone call isn't the same person that opens the check envelope isn't the same person that pulls it out of the envelope. You know what I mean?